What's up everyone? Welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 5 of our scrolling platformer game series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 4, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 4, in which case you should have your movement as well as your obstacle course set up. And that's fine, but in this video, what we'll be doing is to make sure our coins are all set up along the course and we can get coins as we move on. Let's get right into it. The coins are going to be very, very similar to the obstacle. So what I'm going to do is to duplicate the obstacle and then to rename it to be coins, okay? And after this, our coins is going to be slightly different, however, and that is because our clones are going to be all the costumes, pretty much. We won't really have, you know, any uh, one main sprite costume where, you know, there'd just be that one costume uh, from the main sprite that'll be showing up and one less clone than the total number of coins. We'll have all the costumes as clones. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do is first go to costumes and delete all the costumes that are there. Now, after I'm done with that, I'm going to head over to um, within choose a costume, upload a costume. And if you've not downloaded the um, coin from the downloadable link in the description below, please go ahead and do so. You can just navigate through your files and find the coin as an SVG file. So as you can see, that is a coin that I'm going to be using and it's not a really, really great coin, but it serves our purpose. Okay, so now what I can do is to make sure that our setting up within our initializer is correct. So we don't really have to switch costume to anything. I'm just going to make sure we hide and I'm going to remove that show here as well. Now, as far as the go to X position, Y uh, position is concerned, we don't really need it. Um, that's because our coin is going to be out of the stage initially, at least the main sprite is. So I'm just going to set the X position and Y position to be some insanely high numbers like 10,000 and the Y position is also going to be 10,000. Okay. After you're done with that, now you need to change the number of clones because we're going to have 17 coins in total and make sure your clone number is set to one at the beginning. Now, just like the, just like what I did for the obstacle sprite, uh, what I'm going to do is to um, change all of this up and actually before that, let me remove the switch costume too, because this is one costume. All right. So what I'm going to do is to have, you know, all the clone numbers set up with their positions and then I'll show it to you and you can copy them down if you want the same obstacle course. Um, now, if you want to get creative, this is a very, very good time to do so, but you'll just need 17 of these instead of um, 7. Okay, so I just finished putting in all the clone numbers with their particular positions and the code is very, very simple. All I've done is basically said if the clone number is this, then go to this position. If the clone number is this, then go to this position. Otherwise, if the clone number is this, go to this position. Basically, just a whole bunch of if else's and not really that much of difficulty. Um, if you want to go ahead and customize these things and make up your own positions, now is the time to do that. You can just change these X and Y values and you should be good to go with that. Now, there's probably a better way to do it than just, you know, changing the values randomly. Um, but it worked out for me pretty fast. So I do hope it works out for you as well. All right. So now that we're done with this, it's important to set up the collision of the platformer with the coins and making sure that, you know, some variable called coins or whatever goes up. So what I'm going to do is head over to the platformer. And uh, uh, within variables, I'm going to make a new variable. Uh, the first one is going to be called coins. Okay. And I'm going to set it uh, for all sprites. So let's actually do it in caps. And uh, after that, I'm going to make another variable. And this is going to be called coins collected. Now coins is going to hold uh, the number of coins collected in the form of an integer, while the coins collected is what we're going to be showing to our player. And that will be the coins followed by, you know, out of the total number of coins collected. And that in our case is 17. So um, let me hide those two things and uh, right within our begin function, you can set both of them to be um, their first value. So I'm going to set coins to be zero, um, but I'm going to set coins collected to be uh, zero out of out of and I'll remove my caps here. So out of 17 and um, our variables can be strings. So that is um, that is pretty cool. We can have that in place. Um, let me actually show my coins collected right here. So I'll put that. Yep, that's a good position. Okay, so now that we're done with that, now we can head over to the coins 
and uh, you can go to your um, move obstacle function okay and this is where we constantly change stuff so here you can add in an additional if okay so if and you can follow that up with a touching platformer so if it is touching platformer and this is going to detect for every single clone since this is a message so what we can say is if we are touching the platformer then what we need to do is first change coin uh, change coins by one not set change coins uh, by one and then we will set the coins collected to be and now you can head over to operators and grab a join okay and uh, within this join you can put the um, coins variable as the first join and instead of banana you can just add in a space and say out of and 17 that is pretty much all you need and after this obviously we need to delete that particular coin otherwise our score or you know coins collected is just going to go up in infinitely so i'll add in or delete this clone and that's it that's all you need for you know detecting the coins so now when we hit the green flag and when we move our platformer and i apologize for the lag in my uh, particular system that's because my encoder is seriously overloaded with open shot uh, not open shot ops uh, and uh, yep you can see the coins increase and you can go through the entire course if you want and see what coins like make sense to you and what don't uh, i'm not going to be doing that and since we have our coins i'm going to leave it right here if you've enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video.